Grenada signs MOU to embark on phase two of juvenile justice reform project. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, May 28th, I am Leslie Ann Johnson. A project implementation consulting team has been engaged to support Grenada and other OECS member states in developing the procedures, policies, assessment of programs and staff capacity building geared towards changing the approach towards juvenile justice. The Grenada Government, OECS Commission and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, committed to the second phase of the Juvenile Justice Reform Project in Grenada on Tuesday morning through the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding. JJRP2 seeks to strengthen juvenile justice systems to promote the rehabilitation and reintegration back into the society of youth in conflict with the law. Delroy Louison has the details. Building on the first juvenile justice reform project, the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, through the Juvenile Justice Reform Project Phase 2, targets youth age 18 and under who are in conflict with the law, that is, those who have committed offenses for which they could be prosecuted under the existing legislative framework in countries including Antigua Barbuda, Dominica, St. Kitts Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada. Therefore, in an effort to demonstrate their commitment to the cause, the OECS, the USAID, and the Government of Grenada signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Tuesday at the Ministry of Infrastructure Development Conference Room. Addressing members of the media, Director General of the OECS Commission, Dr. Didicus Jules, underscored the importance of prevention in the juvenile justice reform project. Sometimes we measure things by what they've achieved, but there are instances also where we need to assess things, not only by what they have achieved, but what, by what they have avoided. And I think our engagement in this sector with, with USAID, with the JJRP, is, is a classical example of this. Because it is not just about finding alternative ways of dealing with youth in conflict with the law, but doing that in a way that ensures that they do not fall back into a cycle of crime punishment and recidivism that results in a deepening cycle of crime and criminality. Principal Officer of the United States Embassy Grenada, Mr. Stephen Fram, speaks of the importance of reform as opposed to punishment for youth in conflict with the law. Experience has shown that punishment alone does not change offending behavior. In fact, it sometimes reinforces it. The work required to make reform efforts successful is difficult and requires the efforts of many partners working together. Minister for Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment, Honorable Delma Thomas, says the rehabilitation and reintegration of youth into society will require all hands on deck. We look forward to support that will provide through phase two in particular the development of programs for juveniles and strengthening of staff capacity to work with children in conflict with the law. We waited long for this occasion as it demonstrates the commitment of all of us to work in the best interest of our children. This project will continue to introduce and implement a number of reform measures which will result in more modernized systems of youth justice in the Caribbean region and will involve continued specialized training for practitioners and policy makers, the updating of laws, regulations, policies and protocols for the treatment of youth in conflict with the law. For the National Report, I'm Delroy Louison. The government of Grenada has provided additional equipment for the Royal Grenada Police Force to enhance the operation of the traffic department. Prime Minister and Minister for National Security, Dr. The Right, Honorable Keith Mitchell, on Tuesday handed over keys for five new motorcycles to Assistant Commissioner of Police, Jessman Prince. In making the presentation, Dr. Mitchell said it is recognition of the serious problem we face with traffic and traffic violations in Grenada. He says the Ministry of National Security and the RGPF have been examined examining ways to confront the problem. We also have a, a problem of, to some extent, in a level of irresponsible activities on our roads throughout the length and breadth of the country. 
we have to agree on that because I, as a citizen myself, I've witnessed that level of what almost I call craziness. Some of us use our vehicle almost like weapons on the road, a danger to ourselves and to members of the community. In fact, the steps that we are taking is basically to save some of us from ourselves. The Prime Minister is optimistic that the use of the motorcycles and the initiative to introduce traffic wardens will bring about the desired result of helping to address the traffic-related problems being experienced across the country. Welcoming the timely donation, Acting Commissioner of Police, ACP Prince, said the new bikes will definitely help officers in the execution of their duties. I can assure you, sir, that these motorcycles will be used effectively to assist us in managing our traffic situation in Grenada. So you would not be disappointed. Newly installed officer in charge of the traffic department, Superintendent Randy Connaught, said the donation is an indication of government's commitment to managing the volume of traffic and incidents along public roads. He too pledged that the new bikes will be effectively used. The traffic department, as I indicated, is delighted to have these motorcycles added to our fleet of assets. Um, obviously, um, the motorcycles that we engage right now, they're pretty much aging motorcycles. And to combat the, the volume or the veracity that we have seen on the streets with respect to indiscretion as it relates to parking, the volume of traffic, and the congestion overall that has been created um, is a national security issue. Um, citizen safety is high on the agenda in going forward, and we do intend to deploy these cycle, motorcycles um, for right up the, the hand over here this morning. Um, they are pretty much already assigned and from the get-go, they will be hitting the ground running. During Tuesday's presentation ceremony, Woman Detective Constable Chanel Cummings was presented with an award by National Security Minister Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. She copped the award as top Caribbean crime fighter in the Amalgamated Security Services Association of Caribbean Commissioners of Police Regional Recognition Awards Program for Public Law Enforcement. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Every summer, the Spice Island of Grenada is transformed into the Caribbean's biggest party, Spice Man. Come experience the warmth of our people, trending team fats, the revelry, the pageantry, and why we are the Jab Nation. The kids, our future shines on August 3rd in the Children's Carnival Frolic and the Junior Calypso Show. Seven beauties take set to stage as the Queen of Carnival is crowned on Majestic Thursday, August 8th. The prestigious Soka and Groovy Monarchs are crowned on Carnival Friday night, August 9th. Enjoy the pulsating rhythms of the still pan at the Junior and the Senior Panorama on Carnival Saturday, August 10th and Real Steel, August 17th. The March Gras crowns the Calypso Monarch on Carnival Sunday, August 11th. Two days of frolicking in the Caribbean sun kicks off on Monday morning, August 12th with the biggest big, juve big, in the world. Followed by pageant and Monday Night Mass. The creativity and splendor of our mass parades on the road Carnival Tuesday, August 13th. Join us in the Jab Nation of Grenada, August 8th to 12th for Spice Mass 2019. Many events, one carnival. Continuing the news with more than 200 athletes already registered, sporting enthusiasts can look forward to a weekend of keen athletic rivalry in the 2019 Whitsuntai Games scheduled for June 8th and 9th at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Speaking at the weekly post-cabinet briefing, Sports Minister Senator Norland Cox says more than 100 local athletes will participate in the Games, building on the success of the 2019 Carifta Games. Currently, we have over 230 something athletes who have already registered uh, to, to come in. Um, that is separating apart from our national team. And I think more registrations are currently ongoing. Um, from the national team side, we have about 100 and something athletes who will be partaking. Um, so, a lot of our athletes from overseas will be here um, as well to represent uh, Grenada. Uh, we would have um, uh, Lyndon, of course, will be here. Um, I think Josh uh, is already here. Um, Kurt will be here. Um, Kurt Modes, um, Mark and Felix. A number of persons will be here to participate. The 4x4 relay, which will feature our local athletes competing against the Trinidad and Tobago relay team, will be one of the major highlights of the Games.
one of the, the highlights for us would be um, our 4x4 four four relay team, national relay team. Um, we have been um, talking about this for a number of years. Uh, we believe that we have what it takes to represent in that category at the international, at the international level. Uh, so our national 4x4 four four relay team will be competing against the Trinidad and Tobago um, relay team in an effort to qualify for world champions in Doha later on this year, between September and October. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has hailed former Jamaican Prime Minister Edward Siaga as one of the great contributors of his island's rich history. His comment was contained in a statement following the passing of the former Jamaican leader on Tuesday at the age of 89. Dr. Mitchell's statement read in part, and I quote, when I entered the political arena back in 1984, Mr. Siaga was serving as Prime Minister of Jamaica at the time. As a new kid on the block then, I remember looking to leaders like him who had more experience on the political stage. I am immensely grateful for the words of advice that he shared with younger politicians like myself. While there are many things he will be remembered for, including being the longest serving parliamentarian in Jamaica, what's even more important is the contribution he would have made to the shaping of Jamaica's constitution when the country gained its independence from Britain. His passing therefore truly represents the end of an era as he was the last surviving member of the team that framed the Jamaica constitution. Mr. Siaga was a personal friend and a friend of Grenada and of the new national party. I recall him being one of the regional leaders who favored the United States intervention in Grenada in 1983, which led to the return of democracy. Whichever side of the fence we sit on, we must appreciate that as our brother's keeper, we do what we believe is in the best interest. In politics, there will always be supporters and detractors, but it is only fitting that we recognize the invaluable contributions made by those who devote themselves to public life. At this time, I know that I speak for many Grenadians when I say we stand firmly with our brothers and sisters in Jamaica in mourning the loss of their former leader, Edward Siaga. I have already personally communicated my condolences to Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Unquote. And that's the National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson.